That's right, we got another episode of the E31 S85 swap in front of you. Here today we're going to be working on a few things, but let's just start off with the first thing, and that is the tie rod ends. So we got the steering column set up with the wheel connected to the steering column. Now it's a matter of getting the steering column tie rods to meet the spindles on the actual wheel. So what I did was I mocked up the strut housings right in there. I'm gonna put the wheel on, and I'm gonna jack up the wheel to get to simulated ride height, and then measure how far off the spindle tie rod end is off from the actual tie rod output of the steering rack. Staying, stand by guys. <laughs> stand by guys, you don't wanna miss it. All right, so what we have here is we have a system where the steering rack is actually positioned lower than where the spindle locations where the tie rods mount to on the actual spindles, right? So you have your steering rack here. Let's just say this is your steering rack. And then you have your spindle location up here. Um, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have an angle of your tie rod facing upward. What that's gonna do is every time you have a deflection in your wheel, you hit a bump or something, that's going to actually move the wheels in and out. It's gonna change your toe actively, which is called bump steer. So what we need to do is we need to take this rack and the output of our steering, uh, our steering rack is gonna have an offset on it with some tie rod ends that is gonna make it so that the, t the rack is simulated to be up here. So that's gonna be the output that's gonna be straight in line with the spindle at ride height. Now, anytime that the wheels go up and down on a, on, on a rack and pinion system, you're going to have a little tiny bit of movement, and that's okay, that's unavoidable based on the caster of the wheels on every single car. The problem is how do you minimize it? And the way to minimize it is to simulate the actual ride height of the car, and that, 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 that should be completely level with the steering rack. So having offset tie rods is the, is the only solution here because I cannot mount the steering rack any higher. It'll hit the oil pan. One other thing that I'm really trying to work with is Ackerman. Now, with bump steer, it's the steering rack height compared to the tie rod height, and that's what moves the wheels and all that. But Ackerman is kind of the uh, other plane where you're dealing with a steering rack, in our case, that's too far forward and we need to account for a more backwards tie rod. That's why these brackets have been designed, is to relocate the output of the steering column to account for the location of the tie rod. So it's a front to back, not necessarily a height issue. So Ackerman is the, um, is the wheel's ability to turn in tight turns and have that wheel lean in and also account for the different radii of turns during a really tight turn, like when you're getting into a parking space. It's important, it's not absolutely critical, especially for racing applications, but it is important. So I'm gonna try to maintain Ackerman as best as I can by having those brackets offset those tie rod locations such that the tie rods think that the steering column, that the steering rack is in that plane when in fact it's not. That's what these brackets are for. All right, so the wheel is installed. This is an AC Snitcher, I think type three, I believe it is. It's an 18 by eight wheel. So this is not the wheel I'm actually obviously going with, with the car, but it is a good factor of what it will look like in terms of ride height only. So this is a literally simulated ride height right now. And now that I have that set, I know exactly where that guy right there fits in the space and I can compare it to the output of the steering rack. And let's take a look at the comparison there. All right, well, I was gonna try getting the tie rod right on from underneath here, which is exactly the way it should go, but the offset is just so high that the tire is pushed in too much and it's not gonna be able to fit. But with my M parallels that I have, it will fit. Having a wheel in there is good for visual purposes, but as long as I get that height from the visual inspection with the wheel on, I think I'm good. I could just simulate that without the wheel later on by jacking up the, uh, just the spindle up without having any problems. Now the lower spindle is jacked up and the lower control arm, the aluminum looking control arm is level with the subframe. That is what simulates the ride height perfectly. Now that I have that, let's put the tie rod on. All right, so the tie rod is installed and it moves around, right? Um, and so does the distance here. 
as you can see, is probably about four or five inches. Um, and that, you know, that's what this whole point of this exercise is, is to make sure that the output of the steering rack, which is right here, um, connects to here, right? So that it transfers this movement this way, right? And I've struggled with this in the past, and this is actually gonna be really difficult to do correctly, because the best thing to do here is to have this piece, this tie rod, to be as straight as possible, you know, straight um, with the steering rack. But there's probably gonna end up being some sort of a inward bend, if you will, like that. Um, and that is going to be as good as I'm going to be able to get it for this application. So the idea here is that I build something on the output of this uh, steering rack and connect it through a tie rod to this guy, and then that's gonna go straight out to the spindle. change all right next day we got these puppies cooled out and we are going to turn them on a lathe in order to face them and get them all nice and clean we have our bolts these are m16 by 1.5 and now we're also going to mock up the actual location that's going to be welded to these that's going to end up going where the tie rod part this part right here will end up fitting too so you'll see all about how i do this now So the way that this works is this guy gets screwed on through this hole, right? Take, take our guy right here, put it through, and then we just start to install it this way. There we go. Okay. Give it just a tiny, tiny tug. And the thing is, this actually can clock any way we want. So if I have the tie rod in, something like this, right here, right? If I hold it somehow, in fact, I'm gonna attack it in a minute, but if I just hold that, and I move the steering rack in all the way, right? Full turn, right? That's gonna be my constraint. And that's where the tie rod end is gonna end up getting mounted to. So I wanna make sure that I can mount this guy just about there. On, other, on both sides, and that allows the tie rod to go fully out and fully in. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this guy and mount it and basically tack it right there and just see how that works. Let's just see how it works, you know? So here's our prototype. The only thing that's going to be remaining with this as a final assembly is going to be this piece and then this assembly, which is gonna have modified brass bushings to fit inside of here. But the idea here is that this tie rod sticks out and moves, and as you can see, it'll move in all directions and it'll be able to, to move to the contour of the moving tie rod as well as outward and inward as needed. And there's no play in here in terms of you know lateral movement. So that's all good news. Let's see what we can do to install it and hook it up. Now let's center the rack and figure out where center is because once we figure out where the center is, we'll know exactly how much we should trim out of this so that we know how to install that too. So this looks pretty close, and pretty close is good enough when you're coming to center of the, you know, the center of the wheel because the tie rods will move. I mean, you can adjust them, and you, and you can define those minute adjustments by turning the tie rod and getting your alignment set. So I don't care how close it is, the closer the better, and in this case, I think I am pretty darn close. So let's take this off, and let's figure out how, how much we need to cut before we weld.
Okay, so the overall outline is here, right? This guy still needs a couple of bushings. I need to beef up this part a big amount, right? A large amount. Um, this guy here is a uh, half 20 reverse threaded rod, and this is a half 20, actually I think it's a M14 by 1.5 um, forward threading rod. So when you turn this this rod here, it'll either bring both of them in or bring push both of them out. And that's kind of what you want when you do an, uh, an alignment. This guy here is a jam nut for this side. That's the jam nut for the outer tie rod. And the inner tie rod, this is going to end up getting welded to the rod and to the shaft. And this guy will be another lock nut here that goes on right there. So there's gonna be lock nuts on all sides and, um, and that should help to alleviate any type of movement or play. Um, now, as far as the height goes, you can see that the height is very, very good and very close. The only problem that I think I'm going to have here is the banjo nut here on this guy is going to be incredibly close. So I have to figure out something to do there. And I might end up bringing this guy down and, and rotating it down just a little bit. But I think overall, this is actually a pretty good prototype. I obviously need to beef things up and weld things up. I have to turn a lot of this stuff on a lathe, which I'm hoping to get soon. And, uh, and then obviously trim this and just get it all cleaned up and working. But the prototype is actually looking pretty good. I'm very happy about how this is turning out so far. Um, this is a complex design, so you just gotta be careful. That's all. So uh, let's take this off and, uh, and take a look again on the bench. So here is my setup. These are both two identical setups with the exception to the fact that I've only mocked up the locations on this tie rod holder, not necessarily this one. So this is just for example, but I do want to install this. You can see that I have my tie rod outer edge. It goes to my M14 by 1.5 to a set screw here. It goes into a tapped half inch rod. I believe it's a three quarter out, a half inch in. So it's got a one eighth inch wall thickness and it is going to a threaded half inch 20 reverse thread to a female tie rod end. And all obviously all of these lock nuts get tightened up to make sure that everything is secure and adjusted. On the other side here, we have this guy that's gonna end up getting installed onto the actual uh, steering column output. And then this goes in here. So what we'll do is we'll assemble this really quick. We'll install it under the car and then we'll cycle full left and full right. Obviously, we're only gonna do one side right now because I'm waiting on Wolf Tech Fabrication gonna be cutting me some custom CNC made brackets here that are gonna be much bigger, much beefier than this. But again, this is just for uh, prototyping purposes.